Now we want to move to the descriptions of the heart. It's rather shocking when we see how God describes the heart. He's done the diagnosis of the heart. It's not good news. When God talks about the heart, he doesn't describe it in very pretty, pretty terms. Let me give you a few samples. And we need to believe what God says about the heart if we're to move forward. He says our hearts are inclined to evil. Back in the book of Genesis, when he was talking uh, about Noah and uh, was going to destroy the earth, God said, or the Bible says, the Lord saw how great man's wickedness on earth had become and that every inclination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil all the time. The Bible describes the heart, God's description. He said it's full of evil. Ecclesiastes 9.3, the hearts of men, moreover, are full of evil. There's madness in their hearts while they live. Jeremiah 5.23, the heart is stubborn and rebellious, but this people has a heart that draws back from God, that rebels against him, that have revolted against him. Jeremiah again, 17.9, says the heart is desperately wicked. The heart is deceitful above all things and beyond cure. We must believe what God says about the heart. There are some men that got in touch with the heart, not just the Bible definition, but they took a look at their own hearts. Martin Luther, for example. Martin Luther said, I am more afraid of my own heart than the Pope and all the Cardinals. I have within me the great Pope, self, my heart. Albert Einstein said, what terrifies me is not the explosive force of the atomic bomb, but the power of the wickedness of the human heart. John Calvin, a great reformer, said, the human heart has so many recesses for vanity, so many lurking places for falsehood, is so shrouded by fraud and hypocrisy that it often deceives itself. Not a pretty picture, but an accurate picture of our hearts. And we need to accept God's description of the heart. But we need to ask ourselves, how did our hearts get so troubled in such desperate condition as this? Well, there's a pathway to a devastated heart. It's a pathway that our first parents, Adam and Eve, took. But it's the same pathway we take to a troubled heart. But this is where it all started. But that same pattern carries over today for every one of us. And let me give you that. Uh, just paraphrase it a bit. You know the story. God created Adam and Eve, placed them in an ideal situation, and God forbid the minimum. He provided the maximum for them for their pleasure. But God made one stipulation because they were not robots. God said, you can eat of every tree in the Garden of Eden, only one tree, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, I don't want you to eat of that. God had to test them because man had to be tested or he'd just be a machine or a robot. So you know the story, Genesis 3, 1 through 6. You follow that pattern. And here's the pattern. The serpent came to Eve and whispered to her. The serpent said to the woman, so it all began with her listening to the voice of the enemy. Then she loosened her hold on what God had said. Because Satan said, did God really say that you shouldn't eat of every tree of the garden of evil? She said, oh yes, God said that, and he said you shouldn't touch it. God didn't say that. She added to the word of God. 
And when you start playing with the Word of God, adding to, subtracting, making it say what you want, you've loosened your hold on the one authoritative source we have. The third thing she did was looking. She looked at the fruit. She saw that it was good. And as she began to look at the fruit and listen to the listen to the devil's whisper, loosen the hold on the God, God, on God's word, and now looked at that fruit, something began to happen in her. A desire began to stir within her. And there was a longing. She said, I saw it was pleasing, desirable to the eyes. I wanted it. I had to have it. And then thirdly, she laid hold of the fruit. And when she did, at that moment, she rebelled against the authority of God, and she received a troubled heart, a sinful heart, and passed that down to every single one of us. And even today, when you look at temptations that come your way and come my way, that same basic pattern, we hear that little voice, not loud, baby, but Satan saying, you're missing out on something. It would be very pleasurable. And, you know, God wants you to have a pleasurable life. And God didn't say, don't do this or don't do that. And uh, you begin to loosen your hold on the Word of God. And then you begin to look around, and something very enticing is there. Then there's that longing, that desire, I need to have it, and then you lay hold of it. I tell a story about a man that was on a diet. We can all relate to this. He had lost 25 pounds. He was very, very encouraged that he had lost this weight. And uh, one day he was late for work. He got in his car and he starts off for the office and he didn't have breakfast. And he said, you know, it's been a long time since I've had a donut. And uh, I need one. And he began to hear that voice, you deserve it. You've been great on your diet. You've denied, denied yourself. And as he was driving along, he saw a billboard with a donut. And he began to look at that. And uh, he, he began to say to himself, well, the Bible doesn't say you shouldn't eat a donut. I could do that. And uh, he kept looking at it. The more he looked at it, looked at it, it stirred that desire within him. And finally, he said he justified it. And he said, I'm going to drive by the donut shop. And if there's a parking place right in front, I'll believe that it's okay and God wants me to have this donut. Well, wouldn't you know, on the 12th time around the block, a parking space opened up and he went in. That's the way we do it. That's the way temptation comes. And that's the way the heart got devastated. That's the way our hearts are troubled today. And we want to look, look at how God changes our hearts. There are devastations to our heart and many consequences. Every problem we have is a result of what happened in the Garden of Eden, the troubled heart. We want to talk about how God changes our heart in the next section of lectures. Even a small contribution can make a big difference. Jesus fed 5,000 people because of a little boy's five loaves. Regardless of the amount, your contribution is very important and greatly appreciated. Visit us at tvsseminary.com. We saw how the heart was devastated, but I want to talk briefly about some of the consequences of a devastated heart. When the heart was deeply wounded by Adam and Eve's sin and by our own sin. Some of the immediate consequences that Adam and Eve experienced was alienation from God. They hid, they were naked and they were ashamed and they hid from God. And what happens to us when we're born into this world with a heart that is sinful, that is devastated, is that we're alienated from God. The second thing that happened in the book of Genesis was disharmony with self and others. Cain and Abel, right away, 
they had that problem. Cain slew Abel. And also uh, the predominance of the sinful, sensual nature over the spiritual. Many, all the consequences, all the problems that we have in the world today and in our own lives are a result of a devastated heart. That may sound simplistic, but it's very biblical. And all of history, everything you see, every wrong, every evil, every problem known to mankind, every struggle and issue that you deal with is all a result of your heart that has been devastated by sin. Now, I want to encourage you to go back through this lecture and do a little study yourself of understanding the heart biblically. I would encourage you to write a brief definition of the term heart as you understand it, as I've tried to explain it in these lectures. What, what is your understanding of the heart now? Secondly, write a definition of sin. What is sin? And maybe go back to some of the definitions that I've given you and memorize one of them. And especially I encourage you to read Mark 7, verses 14 through 23. Just focus in on that text that's been so important to me as I've tried to understand the heart. And I've walked you through it, but go back on your own and read that passage. And then list some of the consequences of a devastated heart, maybe in your own life, some of the things you're struggling with. And ask God to speak to your heart through the rest of the seminar.